my name is Ulrike Granulger. I come from Austria originally. I work for the Academy for Future Science. Uh, we are an organization that is looking at a link between the ancient history, mythology and philosophy and modern science. The uh, organization is founded by Professor Dr. J.J. Hertog and his wife Desiree Hertog. And we are looking at various um, areas of information that Hertog has put down in his book, The Keys of Enoch. Mm -hmm. This is only as a background so that you know from where the approach is coming. Mm -hmm. The Keys of Enoch contain many ideas of um, what Hertog has um, detailed as uh, future ideas or future developments. And in, uh, these, uh, in this type of um, cosmology or text, the pyramid plays an important role. The pyramid plays an important role in, in terms of the basis of the cosmology of the universe. Hertog is also um, a well-known Egyptologist, and I want to show you some of the experiments that we did in Giza as well as in Mexico. So, but just to give the framework, um, there's several ideas from the book, but two of which are the universe is pyramidal and the universe is created from sound. Um, interestingly, this is um, in recent years more and more kind of confirmed by physics. As uh, since the 1990s, uh, the cosmic microwave background radiation is uh, investigated in great detail. And what is uh, discovered through the COBE and with the new micro Wilkinson microwave uh, detector is that the microwave background radiation is not isotropic, it's anisotropic, as we have already heard about spaces which is uh, interesting in, it, in, it, in itself, um, as this seems to be a kind of a remnant oscillation or memory of the original, um, as it is ex uh, explained, the original Big Bang. And when the um, astronomers and physicists began to look at the detail of the cosmic background radiation, what they discovered is that there is an, you could say, an underlying geometry that would determine the distribution of the hotter and colder areas. Um, so that even in Scientific American, um, the idea has been promoted that there is a cosmic symphony, hmm? that the microwave background radiations show that in the early universe there were harmonious oscillations. There, there may be, um, there's maybe a connection to the musical or sound aspect that I'm trying to show for the pyramid. In addition, however, um, physicists are looking at possible types of shape or topologies for the universe based on the measurements of the background radiation. And I thought of starting uh, this presentation um, with this even before I heard Dimitri Pavlov speak. And I find it is a very interesting or similar approach to his um, uh, proposal, namely in the work of uh, uh, physicists at the University of Ulm in Germany, uh, primarily Ralf Aurich, who are proposing a topology of the universe that is hyperbolic, which is based on the measurements of the microwave background, that uh, showing that the universe has a non-trivial topology. There are various ideas about the geometry of space, mm -hmm. um, each of which has its uh, shortcomings or its um, advantages. The um, pro a proposal that the um, a group of Ralph Aurich is making is that the uh, measurements of the distribution of the background radiation go into or would support the shape of a hyperbolic pyramid. This uh, corresponds with some of the ideas we have put forth um, in, based on ancient ideas. The Egyptians um, had the idea of the kolob or of a type of a pyramidal universe. So this pyramid would be an infinitely high pyramid of rectangular base for hyperbolic triangles. And this can be interpreted, um, this is from the text now, from the article I can show you afterwards, as describing the vibrations of space-time within the universe. Mm -hmm. And this typolo typology is, oops, is almost like um, sound um, of um, Helmholtz cavity, or the type of uh, eigenvibrations of space. Mm -hmm. 
So this um, is, I think, a very interesting uh, beginning to the idea of the pyramid in connection with sound. In our book, we also uh, propose the idea that there are many natural pyramid areas that would be um, vortices uh, that can also be seen, for example, as atmospheric inversions. Before we go to our um, acoustical experiments, I'd like to show you um, that we were also instrumental in finding the famous Osiris tomb. It was our group at the same time of doing the acoustic experiments in the Great Pyramid uh, we, who was there in Egypt when the tomb was found. We were working together with the filming team and uh, the group that went underground together with the geologist. And here we see Dr. Hertog um, pointing at the ground penetrating radar, which is actually already lower down into the Osiris tomb, 30 meters underground. The Osiris tomb is approximately uh, to be found here. This is uh, going to the second pyramid from the Sphinx, approximately here. Because it's dangerous to go down, um, I hope you can see some of this. This is the um, going down into from the top. It goes three levels down. Um, this is from the internet. Someone else made this. So this is the surface. It goes down. You probably know about this Osiris tomb finding. Uh, First level, second level, and the third level has the tomb. On the second level, there are uh, cavities with sarcophagi, mm -hmm. even um, which are very, very heavy. Um, <coughs> uh, interesting to think about how they brought the sarcophagi down onto this level. And here we are on the third level down, uh, which is the Osiris tomb. The um, tomb was uh, had four pillars around, and inside there was a sarcophagus with a lid on top. And in 1996, um, was actually what was discovered was the lid that led to the discovery of the sarcophagus. Here's the team. This is a geologist uh, bringing down all of the material, and this is where they discovered the lid. And uh, that then led on to the discovery of the tomb. Of course, we were not the ones to excavate. This was then done by the Egyptian antiquities under Sahi Hawass. Here we see the lid um, um, brushed. Okay, now to the sound um, experiments. Um, first, I'd like to go to some experiments that we did in Mexico in at certain temples and uh, pyramids of the Maya. Culture. We um, did these experiments between 1999 and 2003 on several excursions. And uh, what we did is we were bringing in a sound source, so white noise or pink noise, and would then test the musical frequencies or the echoes, the reverberations uh, that the actual architecture, the rooms, would provide. We did this in Palenque, Uxmal, Kaba, and Chichen Itza. Um, what um, when we produce sound inside uh, a chamber, like in this chamber, of course the dimensions and the geometries or the architecture of the room would um, have an impact on the transportation of sound. Now these um, pyramidal chambers are built in a way that certain frequencies are naturally enhanced. These are natural free oscillations of the room or the dimension of the room itself. It is, can also be called standing waves that um, are being produced. And, uh, we were looking at the frequencies, uh, the frequency range in which these standing waves uh, would occur. Now, what we discovered is that uh, these the special characteristic sounds and the stronger soundscapes could only be measured in the rooms that had their original dimensions and materials. Mm -hmm. um, when there were rooms that were refurbished or renovated with modern materials, their acoustic properties got lost. So what we did in the sessions was, um, we produced first, uh, the testing began with using pink noise, and then we also used a sine wave sweep between 20 and 20,000 hertz. So a, a quite a large range, um, even a range that we don't hear anymore, below and above. Um, what we discovered is that certain frequencies are being reinforced in all of the uh, pyramidal or temple structures. And the uh, frequencies, uh, reinforcements or stronger frequencies are primarily in the range of the male and female voice. Uh, we found um, through pink noise frequencies that 
uh, three side resonated at 117 hertz as well as um, 216 hertz several of the sides and we also found variations of uh, 47 hertz the interesting aspect is that uh, so this is a Chichen Itza Kukulkan pyramid in interior and we see very strong peaks at 117 hertz and again Chichen Itza when we are, we are using the sweep Several peaks, as you can see, and the strongest peak uh, was at 117 hertz. Now, uh, what we discover is that when you uh, place these uh, or compare these frequencies with the frequencies of musical notes, what the notes that are naturally occurring in the temples um, display is an F sharp chord. Um, we also did uh, experiments in the Pakal. Uh, tomb in Palenque, which is the famous tomb with the lid again, and found um, frequencies primarily at 216 hertz, which would correspond with uh, A, with the note A, part of the F accord, and also in Kaaba, in the palace of the masks. Here is a whole chart of the frequencies that were discovered. We can't go through all of those. Here you see the um, place or the pyramid. Here you see whether it was pink noise, white noise or sweet. That was the first um, excursion, the second excursion. And what we discover is um, primarily um, the notes that would form an F sharp triad or chord. So this in itself is very interesting. As um, it seems that um, ancient cultures mm, placed a, a particular value on this note of F sharp. Um, this, this material is, uh, has been published, or is being published. The following material that we uh, did in the Great Pyramid research has not been published. Um, there is dispute about um, the legality, of course, of all of these experiments. We did have a sound engineer in the Great Pyramid with technical equipment. And that was in 1996 when uh, uh, Tom Danley brought his TEF analyzer, time energy frequency analyzer, um, brought two speaker systems for the production of sound between uh, uh, one above 100 hertz and one uh, for lower frequencies. Also a good microphone, omnidirectional microphone. Here you see it in the King's Chamber. Here the sound speaker on the floor of the king's chamber. Here we are placing a microphone. Testing was done in the king's chamber, in the sarcophagus of the king's chamber, as well as in the five chambers above the king's chamber. As you know, there is uh, cavities <coughs> above the king's chamber. Nobody really knows what they were for. This is the omnidirectional microphone. This is outside actually. So he <coughs> placed his uh, position in various areas. And the, uh, what he was also using is, like he produced the sound and um, made a sweep measurement and looked at the enhancement of the natural reverberations of the room. Also, several frequencies had peaks and what was uh, found, uh, so what we did is a uh, loud slow sweep applied starting at 200 hertz to down to 10 hertz, so this is below the human range of hearing. At certain frequencies, very strong physical um, energy was uh, is felt, so strong that some of the Egyptian guides left the, the room. Mm -hmm. if, if it's a very, at low frequencies and then you produce a lot of boost, uh, that especially here at uh, 30 hertz <coughs> and uh, here we see uh, one of the graphs um, on the on the screen um, that there is a perfect uh, enhancement of certain frequencies only now well, yesterday we went to the great pyramid king's chamber and when people go in and chatter all around it, you don't notice this the japanese came in and walked around and went out again because there's nothing to see but when you, in the human range of the voice you would produce sound, there is a huge invisible soundscape that is produced. I'd like to um, uh, play you now one, uh, that sound that was picked up and uh, that sweep of sound and you can hear the reinforcement at certain notes. Now this is not singing but it was produced through noise. 
um, but the microphone measures the echoes that are coming back and the perfect uh, uh, waveform or, or structure. But what you, what you can see is that from a very, very, very large range, um, reverberations or echoes, if you want to say it easy, uh, simply, were produced. <laughs> And what uh, was uh, especially interesting for him is that the sarcophagus in the room, an object in the room, would enhance and not disturb the vibration. Because usually when you have a very good acoustics in a room, it's better to have it empty instead of having objects in there. Every object um, would geometrically or spatially interfere with the waves. And also interestingly, they found the same notes in the five chambers above the king's chamber. So there is an enhancement of the same note. Now the notes that they discovered um, also are, f are frequency that form roughly an F sharp chord over many octaves, not one. So uh, this is where, where it was done in the king's chamber, the five chambers above the king's chamber and the sarcophagus uh, inside. And here this is copyright, um, this I cannot publish unfortunately. These are frequencies that were measured, 115 hertz, very close to the 117 that we had in Mexico. Uh, we see the F sharp, the C sharp, the A sharp that would together form the tri triad or chord. And we also, this was the frequency range between 45 and 200 hertz. And this is from 0 to 40 hertz. There is also, please, no, no photos if possible. Um, there is also um, frequency ranges below the um, range of human hearing, down to 3 hertz, down to half a hertz, some of the notes that the machine picked up. And if you compare this uh, to the frequencies of musical notes, this is from Wikipedia, based on the uh, 440 tuning that we use today, and we look at for the frequencies that we measured. This comes to these uh, notes primarily. Uh, what does an F sharp chord sound like? We made a, a, a musical piece um, of that, which I play by itself. So we did an experiment. To, we use this for energy enhancement or consciousness enhancement. Of the human brain or the human body. 
For what was most interesting to the sound engineer uh, that did the tests uh, was that he measured the same notes even when there was no sound produced. There is no pick noise or no human voice production. The, um, uh, the, these were eigen vibrations, in a sense, of the building, and that were the same notes that were recorded as uh, when we produced noise or sound. It, uh, the hypothesis is that um, originally, as the pyramids were smooth, had a smooth outer surface, the, um, the wind flowing above the surface and going over the star shafts from the king's chamber that go outside would produce those natural, uh, like um, blowing on a bottle, and that would set the whole <laughs> building into oscillation in a range that we don't hear, but is still there. This was one idea um, for the, a physical production of these sounds that were measured but not produced by any known source. So um, what we do with this is uh, we are pro composing music based on uh, these recordings and we also do recordings of uh, intoning and singing in the Great Pyramid for an effect upon the human consciousness. Thank you.